Hello there Sagittarius, welcome to your October. I just feel like, you know, um, Sagittarius, the overwhelming energy that I'm getting is that um, you want to be very, very appreciative of everything that is in your immediate environment, okay? So that means uh, if people are reaching out to you, definitely take the time to respond. And I feel like, it seems to me like, you know, there's this uh, divide between heart and mind. It's like you're in one place physically, but your mind is elsewhere. Your thoughts are elsewhere. Your heart is divided. So it's not, it feels to me like you're not really living in the moment and you want to be very careful about that, okay? Um, the universe gives us a lot of blessings and uh, we have to seize the, the opportunity. We have to learn to live in the moment and to really be appreciative of everything, uh, of all of the abundance, all of our blessings. So even in times where, you know, you might not feel like you have enough, you feel like you're living in a state of constant lack, you want to make sure that, you know, I, I know it's very cliche for me to say, but... Um, as long as we have like a roof over our heads, a car to drive, you know, money to put gas in the tank, and we have people that care about us, we are ultimately blessed, okay? Uh, some people don't have those things, so I feel like living in the moment and bringing yourself back to really fully invest yourself emotionally in the moment, rather than spacing out, zoning out, or thinking about, you know, how this situation could be so much better if only such and such person were there to experience it with you, okay? So just uh, be appreciative for the here and now. That's going to really help you navigate the energies of this month. Um, the last thing that I'm feeling here is... Um, it almost seems to me as if, you know, somebody significant to you might be contemplating a travel and um, they might actually do it this this uh, month and you might be away from them for a, a period of time, like a, an extended period of time. So you're already like, oh man, what am I going to do? How am I going to deal with that? So all of these things are coming through. So if you're not traveling, I feel like someone significant to you, possibly a romantic partner or possibly a spouse or something like that. Someone significant is coming through that might be dealing with travel. So I feel that coming in, okay? So um, let me see if there's anything else. I'm getting like, you know hazy fuzzy communication across the board but i feel like it's going to get cleared up okay so let's go into this reading here the first card that came out of the deck here is the temperance card and the temperance card is all all about moderation it's it's about like um uh doing things in a manner where you're uh getting just the right amount okay so this is a card about um not overindulging not excessively ru ruminating over things so i feel like it's a lot more about enjoying the moment and being present in the moment okay the temperance card when it comes out it could basically mean um a situation that requires a lot of delicate I guess communication. It's linked up here with the Ace of Swords, which indicates to me that um, you might be in a situation where uh, there is communication coming through and you're feeling a little bit topsy-turvy. Your emotional state is um, riled up. I feel like it's a very positive combination, but it's basically telling you to be a little bit more... Um, I almost feel like to be a little bit more like uh, thoughtful and to think some things through before you communicate. So I feel the element of, you know, uh, communication coming in very, very strongly, where you're going to have to be really, really deliberate and careful about the words that you use, the way that the other person that you're communicating with might construe, misconstrue or might misunderstand what you're saying. So be careful about communication and be careful about, um, you know, delicate communication, delivering bad news or delivering good news in a way where, you know, like it, it doesn't it become too disruptive or too upsetting for the other person. So that's what I feel is coming through for a lot of you. When I first pulled out this card, I got a really um, positive, you know, um, 
a message. I got a really positive image, and you know the the rainbow in the background usually indicates to me like uh, finding silver linings in all of life's situations. Okay, and I definitely feel like the energy for this month is is very. It's like a little bit of a mixed bag. So I definitely feel like a lot of you have gone through some situations last month where there has been like you know a lot of clarity that came through okay so this is kind of like that silver lining moment where you know after the the rainstorm then the rainbow comes out so you're approaching this month with a lot of optimism with a lot of cheerful energy with a, a, a new re like a renewed sense of like loving your life or really enjoying your life that's what I'm sensing and it's interesting mainly because I feel like there has been some foggy energy that was following you around in September and I feel like you were able to I guess cut through the fog and it brought about a new day okay so right now you're feeling very good very optimistic and I do sense that you know this energy is going to continue through the rest of this month okay so cutting through the fog is one of the main things that I'm, I'm getting here um, for those of you who have been dealing with like lack of motivation I'm sensing or you know like um, getting too much either caffeine or sugar in your diet and you were feeling like very lethargic or feeling uh, like you had to wean yourself from dependency on some type of substance I'm not getting like illegal substances I'm, I'm feeling more like mundane things such as alcohol such as like um, sugar coffee tea something like that you ingest on a regular basis that you don't even think about and then all of a sudden you you realize that you know what it's making me feel a little bit uh, out of shape or it's making me feel like I'm not operating at my best so I'm gonna try to wean out that substance from my life okay and I feel like it could just be sugar uh, I'm getting sugar crystals for some reason from this spread so I feel like you're doing some type of revamping when it comes to your personal uh, eating or drinking habits and I feel like it's done so like you're, you're cutting back you're doing things in moderation you're trying to slim down I feel for a lot of you so I definitely feel like not only are you exercising you're also slimming down based on the uh, calorie intake that you're you're putting in your body okay which is great and I feel like you're do, doing a little bit more research as to how you can accomplish your goals and that comes through here with the hermit so the second cluster here is we have the hermit card as well as the devil card and both of these are I feel like this is a, a lot of uh, realization a lot of like this jolt to the system type of an awakening okay so if you look at this situation in combination it seems almost as if you know someone is telling you hey look at this situation where you know you were very bound you were very stuck and you weren't very happy do you want to continue being in this place or do you want to break yourself free so if you can interpret the cards okay the devil deals with restriction the hermit deals with your uh, your spirit guys your higher wisdom higher truths that are trying to come through for you to get you to understand a specific situation so I feel like both of these two cards in combination with one another and the way that they are depicted in in these two cards it indicates to me that there is a unhealthy habit in your life that the universe is trying to force you to face to confront and to break those chains of control okay there is a situation that you guys need to really reassess to get yourself out of because I feel like it's not really serving you anymore it's um, taking away your free will and this can be dependency in terms of you know drugs alcohol I didn't see that earlier but I the devil card can be very very severe in that you know drugs alcohol addictions to all kinds of substances okay and it could be even as a simple mundane as sugar to you know the most extreme form is you know sex addiction uh, alcohol drugs so whatever that one situation is in your life I feel like a lot of you are realizing 
that you need to make a change that is really affecting your ability to think clearly because I'm getting a lot of fogginess with th these two energies where you're kind of like in a daze, you're kind of daydreaming, you're kind of lethargic, I feel like, um, you know, having that sugar crash where you, you, or like food coma, yeah, food coma, where you eat a lot and you feel very, very tired, you feel unmotivated, so I definitely feel a lot of you are re-examining something that is like sapping away your energy, is keeping you very stuck, you don't have control over it, or you feel like it's running your life so regaining this sense of you know human agency free will is going to be really important to you for you um, I feel a lot of you are aware of this you might have swept it under under the rug I feel I'm, I'm getting that that um, it has been you know shown to you and a, a few of you might be sweeping it under the rug and I feel like you know possibly around the last week of the month some information comes through, like some type of information comes through, official information comes through. I'm getting letters and things like that, news letters and things like that coming through that might tell you, you know what, I need to you know, break away from this. And I feel that you are going to be able to break away from this in a way that is really, really healthy, okay? So first of all, we have the Three of Swords, which indicates to me some type of a separation. This can be, you know, like physically removing yourself from a situation that was not healthy for you, from a person that was not healthy for you, and moving forward in a manner where you are going to, you know, like you, you are going to be able to reclaim your power, okay? You are going to be able to chart a new territory, a new path for yourself. So both of these, you know, you don't usually see this combination happening. And uh, I rarely see it in a cluster, but when it shows up to, for me, it usually means uh, separate yourself some, from something so that you can achieve some type of a better offer or even like t some type of a um, spiritual or even emotional cleansing okay so I do feel a lot of you are doing some detoxing a lot of you are exercising a lot of you are really disciplining your body and your mind um, I feel a lot of lethargy with this spread so I feel like a lot of you might not be getting good news when it comes to blood sugar for example and then you're gonna implement a lot of cardio uh, exercise into your routine that's what I'm feeling a lot of you might be um, getting you know like some news about you know health and then you're like okay I need to whip myself in shape so I need to like take better care of my health so you're weaning yourself away from some type of a habit or something that was not good for you. It kept you very, very restricted. It kept you feeling very hopeless, and you're charting, you're separating yourself from it. It is a painful process, and I feel like a lot of you um, will be dealing with this throughout this month. And I do feel that you know, it, the Three of Swords. It looks really scary, but it is a card in the major, uh, in the minor arcana. So the effect of it, I feel like it's um, it's not as detrimental as like the Tower or something you know from the major arcana. But I feel like a lot of you need to do this. Okay, I need to separate yourself from a situation that was really unhealthy. And I feel for some of you, it's because there is a new situation in the works, or because this has been a very very bad toxic environment and as a result of it of separating yourself from it you're gonna be able to achieve a lot more healing a lot of growth and a lot of new abundance that is going to be emotionally fulfilling for you so the cl last cluster here is the Prince of Swords and the Five of Swords the Prince of Swords indicates an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra this is somebody that comes through with very very uh, with a very like uh, direct energy they're quite aggressive they're quite brave courageous okay so a lot of you might be dealing with this person in whatever capacity I feel like they're bringing some news and they're like um, you see them as almost like the knight in shining armor okay and going back to this situation where we have the three of swords here I feel like the energy is very very similar so 
It's also linked up here with the Five of Swords, which basically means that, you know, the Five of Swords is a card that indicates some type of a swift victory. Although it's considered a victory, no one is really winning. It's not, it's like winning at somebody else's expense, okay? So you might be dealing with somebody who is very, very courageous, rash, but they are not very cautious of, about the way they communicate. They might say things to upset you or they might unknowingly say, some things to upset you and I feel like this is not somebody who is um, totally a team player meaning not not because you know they're not because they're not nice but they're very independent they're very come and go and their energy is like um, very malleable like very swift and sudden kind of like the wind so I'm getting you know Aquarius Gemini and Libra someone who's very very independent and um, I feel like don't take the things that they say at face value because they're just very blunt, okay? They don't mean to hurt you because I feel like they're 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 just really blunt. Whatever they think, they will say it, and they're not very like thoughtful when it comes to other people's feelings. They're not as delicate, so I feel like they're not as thoughtful. Um, I wouldn't, you know, like dwell too much on this situation. So going back to the Three of Swords, a lot of you might be separating yourself from an old situation and then you know going off charting a new territory and really putting your foot down I feel like for a lot of you you might be encountering a new person here so this can be an Aquarius Gemini or Libra that you are you know that that you might be leaving um, if it's a partnership like a work partnership business partnership or it's somebody in your work environment I definitely feel like this person might be the one that's leaving if they are causing problems for you in your work environment I feel like they're wrapping up their stuff and leaving for some of you it could be multiple air signs okay so I'm, I'm getting that mainly with the five of swords if there has been troublesome people in your work environment for example I feel like they're going away. They're the ones picking up their bags and, you know, you might have to deliver some bad news, but they're picking up their bags and they're going. So I feel like bad elements are being weaned out of your life for this month. And it looks like it's a very uh, empowering type of energy that's coming through where things are kind of like cleared off the desk in a very swift manner so that you can begin anew. Okay, so it's all very good. So the advice here, we do have the Empress. And the Empress indicates, um, you know, very, very strong pregnancy vibes. For some of you, um, there could be, you know, new love coming through via children. So this can be adopting a child, uh, taking on the role of the nurture, the maternal figure or the paternal figure. And uh, new people being brought into your life, new a new child, a birth of a child, or especially, you know, like adopted children. So I definitely feel like... Um, this combination could also mean like, you know, once again, something is with you, right? So let's say, for example, you're carrying a baby and you might deliver this month. So there might be, you know, some type of sharp objects involved. You might deliver and then you have like a new bundle of joy. So that's one interpretation of this. I rarely see it in... A, together so but with the Empress card it deals with pregnancy it deals with like the mother figure so I definitely feel like themes surrounding uh, children child rearing and you know maturation children leaving the nest for example going to a different situation where they have to fend for themselves and it's all a part of a growing process it might be difficult for you to accept but I feel like you're gonna do it no matter what and I definitely feel like um, you're going to be playing the, the role of the mother or the father figure for this month for a lot of you, okay? What I'm also feeling here is um, if you have recently had somebody that passed away, and this is like, a, I feel like a very strong sister, mother vibe, okay? If you've had somebody that recently passed away, um, I definitely feel like there's a lot of guidance, spiritual guidance that is coming through for you for this month. And uh, the spiritual guidance is coming through to tell you these are the things that you really have to um, cut out of your life, okay? Either, like, I feel drinking, smoking, uh, sugar intake, um, taking better care of your health. So you're getting some type of spiritual advice regarding something that you've been doing 
that is not really serving you anymore so you're gonna have to wean it out of your life and for some of you this is gonna be you're gonna have a lot of success okay so I feel like the way to do this is is to keep yourself very very busy because I get the feeling that you know like idle hands or the devil's playground it's sort of like I feel like you naturally Sagittarius are very impatient um, not more than other people but you are naturally you know just impatient as a fire sign and I feel like if you keep yourself very very busy you can overcome anything so you don't you, if you keep yourself busy if you occupy your time with a lot of things to do then you know like physical activities running jogging um, guitar you know like taking on new hobbies it keeps you very grounded because then your fire energy will uh, have like a, a proper healthy channel to dissipate itself okay so I feel like if you are not keeping yourself busy you might resort to like um, you know like snacking all the time so be very careful about that that's the message I'm getting here and I feel like you're getting some type of um, inspiration to change your life drastically change your life change the way you look revamp your style cut out some things from your diet so that you can you know be healthier okay a lot of you might be um, taking a relationship to the next level regarding some children I feel for some of you um, there might have been I feel like some some type of um, difficulties getting pregnant in the past mainly because of like I, I feel like um, you know miscarriages and things like that this is the month in which it's coming into the picture where you might have um, where you know if you've had been trying to get pregnant in the past this is a very very fertile month for you okay and I feel like even though you might be trying there's still some apprehension about it because of some past disappointments okay I'm not gonna dwell on this too much but I definitely feel like that energy is coming through and is basically telling you any type of a uh, so actually the Sun is in Libra right now in the constellation of Libra any type of like makeovers any type of um, beautification or you know revamping process is going to be very good for you like after October 5th okay because right now we're still dealing with the tail end of the uh, uh, mercury retrograde shadow period but after October 1st when mercury in retrograde is direct completely direct um, any type of a uh, revamping or beautification process you know changing your hairstyle changing the way you look I feel like all of these things would be highly supported okay um, I'm going to go into your love reading and see what's going on for you guys okay So what's going on for Sagittarius for love and relationships love romance relationship October Sagittarius for some reason I'm getting a lot of uh, dizziness dizziness and you know that vertigo feeling um, make sure that you get enough rest make sure you drink a lot of water because I, I, I'm just getting like you know vertigo that that sense of if you are out and about it oh exploring for example it's interesting the tower is here um, if you're out and about exploring, you know, um, be careful, okay? So I'm getting like, yeah, just um, a little bit of a dizzy energy. Okay. So let's see this situation here. Okay, so let's talk about the past. 
because um, that's a, a better starting point, especially with this spread, okay? In the past position, we have the Two of Cups and the Knight of Cups. And I'm not going to read reversals with this deck, mainly because I want to just, um, you know, start out telling a story. Um, what I feel happened in the past, this is something I feel like might not be in your life anymore, but I, I definitely feel here, in the past position, we have a water sign, okay? So this is a um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And I feel like this is a person that you have invested a lot of your time, your energy, and your, you know, your love and your devotion in, okay? And I feel like you were waiting for a very, very long time for some type of communication from this person. And this can be their sun, moon, or rising. Um, I feel like a big part of you feels this sense of connectedness with this person. The Two of Cups usually denotes a situation where um, it's like a, a soul connection. You know, it, it's like a past life energy, a soul connection where you meet somebody and your soul recognizes them. And uh, whenever I see the Two of Cups, I usually think of it, you know, in terms of astrology, some type of a sign interchange. So, for example, if you're a Sagittarius um, sun, they might be a Sagittarius moon. If you are, like, a Sagittarius rising, they might have, like, a Sagittarius sun. So there's something in terms of, like, sign interchange between you and another person. So I feel like because of it, you have... You, you might like encounter one another um, multiple times like you you might go somewhere and automatically see them there so there's a sense of like fatedness almost like serendipity associated with you and this person and as a result of that you know of like having seeing all of these coincidences happen in your life and their life you know for you end up at the same place at the same time or you know you know the same friends or, or something like really serendipitous you feel as if this situation is faded like that that's the way that you feel okay if you're not dealing with this person then i feel like that's the way that they feel so you might feel like well if they're not meant for me why do i keep running into them well a lot of the times when we have uh, similar signs, so that means, you know, let's say if you're, um, well, you're the Sagittarius, but if you're a Sagittarius sun, they're a Sagittarius moon, um, I feel like there are certain planetary transits and aspects that will draw you to come to a specific place at a specific time. And that is like, it, it, it's its own, you know, cosmic, way of making things come together so because of that everyone with those signs you know might um cross your paths everyone with those same placement might cross your paths so you know it, it's it's just the way that the universe works it's just the way that astrology works and i feel like you might be putting a little bit way too much stock into like that whole sense of like karmic connection and as a result of it you might cling on to a situation that is not appropriate to you because you feel like it's meant to be okay so be very careful about that and um, these are very very good cards overall so I'm not knocking it but what I mean to say here is uh, there is such thing as divine intervention I do believe that there's also such things as human free will okay and I feel like by um, seeing a situation through the lens of like karma and fatedness it's not letting you take control of your free will. It's not letting you exercise, you know, really taking control and taking stock of what this situation entails. For example, if it's very toxic and you're still in it because you feel like, oh, we're fated to be together. We're fated to experience this karma together. Well, actually, no. You're fated to meet, to learn a lesson, and to move forward from it, okay? So dumping your energy in, a, in an avenue, in a person, that is not a healthy relationship partner for you. You want to be careful. So there is divine intervention, but there is also free will. And finding, you know, whatever, no matter what happens, exercising your free will is something that you're going to have to do for this month. I feel that energy coming through so heavily. 
and a lot of it has to do with moderation you know like not erring too much on uh, relying on like karma and destiny and then not relying way 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 too much on like forcing things so I feel like that that middle ground is gonna have to be reached for you okay and the most important thing here is in order to have a harmonious relationship right in order to have a harmonious relationship the other person has to be on board okay so if the other person is giving their all then yes it seems like you know that's legitimate so then it requires a lot more work from your end, right? So it, it's give and take. And I feel like you have somebody in your life. For some of you, this is in the past. So, you know, possibly, I feel like July and then September, you might have met somebody new. And if you have somebody in your life, I definitely feel like it seems almost like this karmic relationship, okay? Which brings us to the present moment. In the present moment, we have the Eight of Cups, okay? So a lot of you might have moved away from a person, might have, like, found out that this situation, it, it seemed like it was very serendipitous. It seemed like it was more than just coincidental. I feel like the other person was something, wanted more out of it than you were willing to give, okay? Or you found out that, you know, maybe they were misrepresenting themselves. But either way, I feel like one person is a lot more invested than the other person. Because I feel like one person is coming in, bringing in, and the other person is not really reciprocating. So there's something going on in the past where you have been dealing with this person. And I feel like you're moving away from it. Here we have the Eight of Cups, and the Eight of Cups is a situation that you've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of love and affection in. It's not panning out the way that you want, so you are going to have to like move away from it in order to find something that is more, more conductive that you can do or devote your time to, okay? So it's kind of like redirecting your energy to another avenue, another person. What's linked up with it here is the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And what it's telling me here is I feel like you've moved away from a very, very emotional uh, relationship. And I feel like for a lot of you, you're in in a new situation that is really, it's like more fun, more exciting, more intellectually stimulating um, but it might be lacking in the emotional front, okay? So in the past, there was this really heavy, heavy, heavy emotional energy. And you feel like, you know, this is the one for me. And then when that relationship fell apart, I feel like you jumped into another situation. And it wasn't heavy. It wasn't hev like an emotional, heavy experience. It was more fun, more excitement. But I feel like there's a, a sense of lacking instability associated with it, okay? Um, what's crowning this reading? And the crowning energy is something that you are thinking about. We do have the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups here is a water sign. Aquarius, Gem I'm sorry, um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, excuse me. It's so, so what you're thinking about here is potentially that past love, that past relationship where, you know, it, it seemed very serendipitous. It seemed very faded. It seemed like everything fell into place and you didn't have to really push for things. Everything was just there. Everything had, had like a, a slot for it. And it, it seemed like everything came together in a very, very neat way and you didn't have to go ahead with it. But at the same time, you're also realizing that, you know, it was a very emotionally draining type of a relationship. It might have started out in a very stable manner, but I do sense that the other person, they're a little bit too intense for you, okay? And by that, what I mean by that, uh, too intense, is emotionally they might be very... Um, they need a lot of validation. They might need a lot of um, alone, like, you know, together time with you. They might have been possessive. They might have uh, behaved in a way where um, they, they might be jealous for all the wrong reasons. So I feel like some element of um, emotional fluctuations with somebody that you were dealing with in the past, okay? So what you're thinking about now here is the Queen of Cups as well as the Tower. And I feel like there is an, a water sign, so Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, coming back in, okay? So I feel like for some of you, you might have been interested in a person that was attached. And they were attached, so you respected their boundaries. 
and you moved on. You found somebody else, and you found, you are now in a relationship that is uh, very, very fun, exciting, lighthearted. But it didn't have that heart and that soul that you're looking for. And you might get news that you know the other person is has either broken up with the tower here with their significant other so they might have a relationship status change you might find out about this through mutual friends you might find out about it through social media through some light internet stalking that you know they're no longer with their significant other and you're thinking about them and you're thinking about them a lot in a more you know loving lustful way so I feel like that might be happening for some of you um, water signs specifically, okay? So I feel like there is some change in a water sign's relationship status. If they were in a heavy relationship and you've always liked them, but they weren't, you know, emotionally, they, they weren't, they were always with another person, they weren't single, then I definitely feel like you're finding out about a change in their status, okay? So it could even be like, um, if they were single, then you might find out they're in a relationship and, and that can work out too. And, and if they're, if you have been, like, you know, crushing on them, I feel like they might be now single. And I feel like for some of you, they might be single and they might be reciprocating your feelings or they might be trying to reach out to you. Now, the foundation here, the foundation is a situation on which the whole entire, you know, story is built upon. This is something that we know to be true, okay? We have the Seven of Cups as well as the Seven of Swords. And this is, both of these cards indicates um, a lot of things like pitfalls that you need to be careful about, okay? The Seven of Cups is a card about fantasy. And this is a card about, you know, having many, many options, um, being inundated with options, being sought after, and being in a really good space, okay? All of these options are not always good for us. So when we find ourselves, um, the world opening up for us, and all these options are presenting themselves, I feel like that's when you need to be judicious about which ones you are expending your energy and um, your time to go forward with, okay? Because what you see is not always what you get here with the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords indicates some type of a sneaky behavior in which there is potential here. Both of these cards indicate temptation. Doing something that we're not supposed to because of lust, because of feelings, because of these uh, raw emotions that, are, that we're not able to pin down, okay? So be careful about the choices that are given to you. And, uh, you know, really trust your intuition with this because I feel like you might be um, tempted with an offer and the offer seems like, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like because, you know, the, the, the two cards is like one is a cup suit and the other one is a sword suit, I feel like you just might have two options. You might have somebody that is coming through giving you, you know, like this um, this um, wedded bliss, you know, this, this fantasy, okay, if you're dealing with a water sign. So the water sign is like somebody, if, if it's somebody from the past, I feel like you might have... Um, they might have like painted a rosy picture and then on the other hand the air sign might have like a situation where they're attached with someone but they're not um, complete like they're you know they might be separated but they're not completely um, detached or severed completely so there's some type of fantasy here and there's some type of deception that you need to be careful about okay Sagittarius so what I feel, and this can, there are many scenarios here. I feel like, I feel like some of you might be dealing with both, okay? Water sign and then air sign. So water sign, Pisces, Cancer, uh, Scorpio, from the past. You might be married to this person as well, and then you have a temptation coming through. And um, just be very careful about that. Uh, the temptation might be the air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. A lot of you might have dealt with, like, you know, somebody from the past that could be a water sign, and they painted a rosy picture. They're trying to come back in, and you're with somebody else. Okay, so I feel that coming through. Now, what's in the future position here? We have the Emperor, 
and the Page of Swords, okay? So both of these things indicate to me that I feel like strongly Sagittarius. You are the one with the two options. You're the one that has control in this situation. And I feel like, um, I almost feel like I'm not telling you things that you don't already know. You know who's sneaky because based on this past energy, you know, like, you, I feel like you're doing some type of uh, internet I don't know, research or something, but you're coming across some type of information about a, another person. You're coming across, it's almost like the scrying card. She's looking into a bucket of water, and she's privy to some type of in, uh, information that, you know, that the other person doesn't know about. So I feel like you're aware of what you're doing, okay? So I feel like no matter what, you're the one that is kind of like the larger than life persona and the other two people are coming through, offering you something and you know that it's not entirely real. The offer is not entirely real. They're painting a rosy picture, but I feel like you might be leading them on just to see if they're going to deliver. But I feel like you're keeping your feelings very close to your chest. And um, I don't sense that you're going to fall for it, okay? You know who is being tricky and who is sincere. I do sense that you know it, okay? So I don't feel like this is a anything that I'm telling you that is groundbreaking at all. Because I do feel like the energy is very other-oriented. That means they're the one bringing you these things. But I feel like you're... You're sharp and you're observant, okay? Um, let me see what else is coming through here. In terms of the advice, okay, I'm going to pull out three cards for you guys. Okay. Okay, so in terms of the advice here, we do have the Three of Swords. And the Three of Swords is basically warning us that, you know, this is um, for you to really re-examine whoever that has broken your heart. Just don't even give it the time of day, okay? Because I feel like in this situation, it's sort of like, you know, once burned, twice shy. So this person is very, very protective of their heart. They're carrying these wounds with them, and they're, the, the heart has swords in it. So, like, they're still trying to nurse a broken heart. And I feel like whoever has hurt you in the past, they might be coming back in. And you might still be communicating with them. But I feel like you know better, okay? You, you might be longing for that connection. But I feel like a lot of you know better. You know that it's not going to go anywhere. So I feel like you're not uh, fooling yourself. What else is coming through here? We have the King of Coins. And the King of Coins, this is what I call, you know, like the, the standard Mr. Right. And um, I feel what's happening here is that a lot of you have met somebody that you feel a, a very strong connection to. Like that, you know, karmic soul type of a connection. But... If he or she shows up as the Mr. or Mrs. Right, and they have hurt you in the past, you want to be a little bit careful, okay? And then also, if somebody's coming from your past, and you're in the present situation with somebody that you feel is the Mr. or Mrs. Right, you want to be very careful about not stepping out on the relationship, okay, Sagittarius? Because the last card here is the Wheel of Fortune, which basically means things are turning around for you. The series of, you know, uh, disappointing relationships being used, I feel. And also, like, um, you know, dealing with people 